We don't know what he looked like, nor much about his life, except... He probably saved hundreds, perhaps even thousands of lives here. And he saved, in effect, Shetland from something that could have been a real disaster. No, that's no mean feat. John Williamson was from Aeschines in North Mavin. That's the northwest corner of the islands. Nobody knows exactly when he was born, probably the first quarter of the 18th century, so that's roughly 300 years ago. In the 18th century, landowners compelled their tenants to fish, to pay their rent, so he farmed and he fished. And because he was a subsistence farmer, fisherman, he needed to be able to turn his hand to fix things. Now, beyond the making of things in wood and metal and leather, which is things that various people in the community did, John Williamson was of a different streak altogether. He had an inquiring mind, a mechanical mind, an analytical mind, problem-solving mind. Not only could he fix a broken clock, but he could also fix a broken arm. He could make a splint and he could set the bones and it's known, it's documented that he did this and it was successful. Now you can see that that was a conceptual shift, healing humans and not just machines and gadgets. This was written by George Lowe, who visited Shetland in 1774. This man is remarkable for his many mechanical performances, but is under great disadvantages, never having it in his power to improve his genius as he might elsewhere. True, John Williamson was of humble circumstances, it's unlikely he had a formal education. Instead, he was empowered by his imagination, which earned him a name across Shetland and time. That would be Johnny Notions. Johnny Notions. Johnny Notions. Johnny Notions. I think his real name was John Williamson. It was Fay Asianus. That was him. John Williamson, who from his various attainments and superior talents, is called Johnny Notions amongst his neighbours. It's the name that he's almost exclusively uh, called by to this day. Johnny Notions today in the 21st century is most well known as he was in the 20th, in the 19th and indeed in the 18th century for his smallpox inoculation. Smallpox is a deadly virus that causes pus-filled blisters to develop all over the body. Those who survived often had long-term problems like blindness and severe scarring. Smallpox was actually one of the nastiest viruses that infected humans. And it even got so bad in some of the pandemics that it was declared to destroy empires. Because can you imagine when a disease like smallpox takes away 30% of the population of artisans, of politicians, of medics, then you really have no society left. The oldest evidence of smallpox was found in the scarred skin of a 3,000-year-old mummy. It took more than a couple of thousand years to arrive here. Smallpox first came to Shetland in the year 1700. It was taken first to Fair Isle and then to the rest of Shetland. And the death toll in Shetland in 1700, but also in 1720 and 1740 and 1760, was huge. It was called in Shetland the mortal pox. The records of the Kirk Sessions and the Presbytery of Shetland had lots of information about the devastation that was being caused in the early period uh, when smallpox got on the go, the period before Johnny Notions was born. The dead in every corner, said the Minister of Tingwall in December, were so many that the living and whole could scarcely be able to bury them. There is no cure for smallpox. The first attempts to prevent it were recorded in China about a thousand years ago. The process is called inoculation. A healthy person is deliberately infected for the purpose of developing immunity. In China, they inhaled a powder made from smallpox scabs. 
Generally, the person got mild symptoms, but was protected against the disease for the rest of their lives. Travellers' tales and variations of inoculation spread across Asia and Africa, finally making their way to the UK in the 1700s. This is a letter by a man called William Edmonston, who was a Shetlander, and he was a surgeon in Leith, and he's writing to give advice on inoculation, and it's written in Leith in June 1758. The manner of doing it is as follows. To make a small incision with a lance, so as some blood comes away in that part of the arm or leg, then to put in about the bigness of a barley corn, the poxy matter, which must be good and perfectly ripe, has well absorbed, then a sticking plaster, and afterwards a compress and bandage. There were serious risks in inoculation. Uh, people could get serious uh, attacks of smallpox, and therefore they could die. Uh, people could have uh, blindness as a result of inoculation. No doubt aware of the risks, Johnny Notions came up with an unconventional solution. He used peat smoke to dry the smallpox matter, added camphor as a preservative, then buried it for seven or eight years before using it. Though many physicians recommend fresh matter, this self-taught practitioner finds from experience that it always proves milder to the patient when it has lost a considerable degree of its strength. By a small knife made by his own hands, he gently raises a very little of the outer skin of the arm so that no blood follows, then puts in a very small quantity of the matter, which he immediately covers with the skin. The only plaster he uses is a bit of cabbage leaf. From the mid-1770s until he died, he walked around Shetland he inoculated hundreds and hundreds of people. It was said at the time that none of his subjects died. Johnny Notions probably died in the mid-1790s. A couple of years later, an English doctor named Edward Jenner came up with a different way to immunise people against smallpox. Another person who noticed things. So he noticed that milkmaids that were infected previously with a virus called cowpox never got smallpox. So he took a sore from one of the milkmaids who had cowpox and inoculated a nine-year-old boy. And then he exposed that young lad to smallpox and the boy never contracted the disease of smallpox. Dr. Jenner presented his findings to his learned peers. After initial ridicule, Jenner's discovery was widely accepted as the safest and most effective way to inoculate against smallpox. He called his method vaccination, after the Latin word for cow, vacca. Vaccination marks a medical milestone in the fight against smallpox. Fast forward to 1980. After more than 3,000 years and hundreds of millions of lives lost, the World Health Organization announced the death of smallpox, one of humankind's greatest achievements. And Shetland's Johnny Notions is part of that history. He was self-educated. He was Shetland's great autodidact. He taught himself mechanics. He taught himself medicine. I think that Johnny Notion was an incredible individual. And I think he had the ability to put concepts together. So he probably was thinking if he could weaken the virus and then inoculate it, that it would cause a weaker strain of illness. And he was really correct because now that process is called attenuation. And scientists do it on purpose when they're looking at how to make a vaccine in some cases. Vaccination later replaced inoculation but uh, was there a legacy? Well, I'd say yes, because probably thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, if you look at genealogy in that way, of Shetlanders wouldn't be here today were it not for him. Mm -hmm.